So we have a five kilogram block that is up on top of a hill. It's going to slide down the hill on a frictionless surface and then meet a patch of friction here. And the question is, how far across the friction surface will the block slide? So we have a few things that we know. We know the initial velocity of the block and we know how high in altitude this hill is. And, we're, um, and we know what the friction force will be that is acting on the block. And we want to know how far across it will go here. So that's, our, that's the thing we're trying to find. Let me show you how to use the equation that is necessary here. <clears throat> this equation says that the work done by the non-conservative forces uh, are responsible for the change in mechanical energy. So first we have to find um, three different things. We have to figure out what work is done by the non-conservative forces in this system. We also have to figure out what the final energy content of the system is, that's mechanical energy, and what the initial energy content is. So let's draw the final position of our block here. Our block slides down the slope, and the really cool thing about these problems is you don't have to care about anything else besides the three elements that I just told you about. Work done by the non-conservative forces, and the only non-conservative force here is friction, um, and the final energy minus the initial energy, and we don't care what happens to the block in between. It could go around a loop-de-loop -loop and end up right down here, and it wouldn't matter. What only matters is the initial energy, the final energy, and the work done by the non-conservative forces. In other words, the energy taken from the system. That's what's responsible for the change in energy. Okay, so the block ends up, let's just draw the block here. Let's say that the block ends up right there. And so we're being asked to find this distance, this displacement. We're gonna call that a vector D. Now let's go ahead and find the um, work done by the non-conservative force. So we know that work, the work done here is equal to uh, the force. So it's equal to a force times a displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, so the work times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the work I'm sorry, between the force and the displacement. Okay, so our displacement was pointed this way, and our force is pointed um, the opposite direction from the motion because it's friction. So our friction force is actually in that direction. Now you can see that the angle between these two forces is 180 degrees, or pi. So what we're going to get from this is negative 1. So really, the work done by the, by the force, it makes sense that the work done by the non-conservative force is something that takes energy from the system. So we're going to have negative the friction force, which we're given, it's 10 newtons, times d, which is the thing that we're trying to solve for. The initial system has a potential energy, because let's put our zero potential gravitational potential energy here. And so we are up by 2 meters. So our initial energy in the system is, let's see, E initial is equal to, it's got kinetic energy, 1 half m v initial squared, and it's a pi, so it's got some potential energy. This is a positive 9.8 because it's just an amount that is um, up <laughs> Um, so this is our initial energy. Um, this is a positive number. The final energy. The final energy is equal to, well, it has stopped moving, and it has come to um, where we called our zero potential here. So it has no potential. It has no kinetic. There were no springs in this system, and it's not compressing a spring here, so there's no potential energy from the spring either. Those are the only forms of energy that we could have, so the final energy is zero. All right, so let's put everything together. Um, we were told that the work done by the non-conservative force is equal to the change in energy. All right, so zero minus, I'm rewriting this equation here, 
the initial energy, one half mbi squared plus mgh. This is equal to negative fd. And now we have an equation that we can solve for d here. All right, I have put in everything that I was given, five kilograms, four meters per second, that was our initial energy, and um, the uh, gravity and the height of the initial hill, and divided it by the friction force, and what you get if you solve this all out is 13.8 meters. And that's how you use energy conservation to solve a problem when it contains a non-conservative force like friction.